y'all. Welcome back to my channel. If you are just tuning in, my name is Lauren and I am a first year, first grade teacher. Today will be day 12 of my classroom setup series. And today and tomorrow are actually the final days in my classroom uninterrupted of just setup. So this video will I think be the last video in my setup series. There will be little projects that I do, um, but I am going to switch over to weekly vlogging. And then those little projects and little tune-ups in the room will just be included on the vlogs. But this is the last video of classroom setup and I am super excited. I did go to Home Depot yesterday after school to have them um, shake up the magnetic primer. And then someone actually commented on one of my videos or on the video that was posted yesterday with which involved the paint that I should sand the surface to rough it up a little bit before I use the magnetic primer. So um, we don't have sandpaper. We have a lot of tools in our house. We don't have sandpaper. So I'm going to run to Walmart and get sandpaper on my way. And then I'm wearing my painting clothes again. This is very weird for me. I like to wear, um, I always like to be a little bit overdressed for an occasion, but you know, painting clues because we're painting. So um, anyways, it's a painting day. I'm going to go get the sandpaper, grab some coffee, <laughs> and then I will see you guys in the classroom for day 12. Oh, really quickly before I even get on the road or do anything else today, I feel like a broken record saying this, but I'm never going to stop thanking you guys. And thank you for 7,000 subscribers. Seven is my lucky number actually. So I'm really excited today and I am just feeling refreshed. I'm feeling excited and I am ready to get to the classroom. So I will see you there for some painting. We made it. I have my sandpaper and all of my supplies for painting these doors. Um, I did get some helpful comments on yesterday's video when I mentioned the painting about making sure that the surface is prepped correctly. So then I did a little bit more um, like digging about what I should really do to the surface. And because it has kind of like a glossy, it's pretty faded, but I think it originally had like a glossy clear coat on it. I'm going to get the tape off that's on there. There's like some masking tape and I'm just gonna scrape it. And then I'm going to rough up the surface with some sandpaper and then we will get started with priming the doors. I'm not wasting any time today <laughs> because I know that I want these all to be primed. And someone else mentioned that sometimes it helps if you do multiple coats because then there is more iron um, like per area in the paint behind the dry erase and it'll be more of a strong magnetic attraction if you do more coats of the magnetic primer. So I think I'm gonna end up using both cans of primer. Um, so it might be a double coat day. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with prepping the doors, not wasting any time here. That way we can make sure that the priming is finished today. Let's prep some doors. quickly um, through my hair in a bun and <laughs> so sorry about that but I forgot to mention I had been going back and forth about doing four or doing all six of the doors and I have decided since I already have the paint that I'm going to do all six of them um, and then I will be able to use the magnetic attraction even if I don't use the dry erase function I can use the magnetic like function of it to hang things on the two outside doors like anchor charts because then I'll be able to use like a magnetic curtain rod or other things to hang that will be a bit more useful than like command stripping everything to the door which would be a little stressful and hard to remove. So I'm going to paint all, oh my arm is not long enough, <laughs> all six of them. Big project. Alrighty you guys, all of the doors are sanded roughly um, just so that they're not a glossy surface and the paint will apply better. I'm a little nervous now about the amount of primer that I have. Um, reading it on the can, it suggests using this much for like two of the doors. And I have six doors and two cans of paint. So I might have to go get another thing of primer. I'm gonna start in the middle because I've already taped the top with painter's tape and the little cardboard thing is here, the little drip thing. Hopefully it won't drip, but in case it does. Um, but anyways, it is the moment of truth. I'm going to open this paint. Um, I was assured it would be okay. Let's see. Ooh. Well, it looks the same as it did yesterday. So if that tells you anything, then this is a bad sign. I have a paint stirrer now. I'm more official. Okay, you guys. 
the same thing. Hmm, maybe if I just stir it a little. Give me a minute. I popped the lid back on and shook it up a little and then stirred it, and now it is pretty good. Here, let me show you really quickly. This is what it looks like. It's just a really thick paint. It actually reminds me a lot of, if you guys ever did that, like, science experiment with um, States of Matter where you put cornstarch in water and it, like, gets solid really quickly, but as soon as you touch it, it, like, dips. That's exactly what this feels like. So if you guys ever get this magnetic primer and you're confused, don't worry, that's normal. I think. Um, anyways, I'm gonna fix my hair so it's a little tighter and it'll stay done and we're gonna do the first door. I'm nervous but excited. Two doors have been primed roughly. I think I'm gonna have to go back once the first layer dries and touch in some spots where the paint isn't like so ev evenly spread. But I'm getting really nervous. I know it says you can top it with any color and even on the can of the magnetic primer, it shows dry erase paint. So like, I know that they are probably fine to be paired together, but like, that is black. How the heck? Is it gonna cover it? And now there's paint on the door, so I have to see this project through. This thing has started, and this train's coming down the tracks, and there ain't no getting off. So we're just gonna keep going and prime all six of the doors, and then pray and hope that tomorrow the white will cover it. I don't even know if I'm gonna sleep tonight. I'm so nervous, y'all, because that is straight black. And you know black is not in my color wheel. That does not belong in my classroom. So this black is gonna have to go, whether it gets dry erase painted or primed and painted and primed and painted again and again and again, it's gotta go. So I'm just gonna keep at it now because I've started. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> Let's keep working. Okay, the three in the middle are finished and I was able to do them like evenly coated with just one can. Um, now I'm in <laughs> a little bit of a predicament because I have two on this side and one on this side, so I'm gonna have to drag the little drip box back and forth and back and forth. Um, I figured out that when you're painting, you have to do kind of like a thin coat, move on to the next one, do a thin coat, move on to the next one, a thin coat, and then come back to like go over it again lightly to make sure that everything is really like evenly covered. Um, so anyways, my arm is covered in like little drips, but luckily the floor itself managed to not have any drips. So everything is on my body and not on the floor. That's good news, I'm wearing all black and gray because I figured that would be the case. So that's also good. Oh, I thought I had paint on my face. Also, I posted a fun little poll on my Instagram or actually I just shared a picture of this and I said, adding black to my colors, what do you guys think? So I'm really excited to see what anyone says. It'll be gone by the time you're seeing this, but if you replied, LOL, it was a joke. But I'm gonna finish the other three and then we can move on to something else. I'm not sure if you can tell. Okay, you can definitely tell, but that is the difference between just doing like the quick coat that I mentioned and then doing like a thorough, going back, making sure it's even coat. So those three are the three I've already done first. Now I'm coming back to this one to do the like finishing coat and then I'll come over here to do the finishing coat. And then those are drying. I'm exhausted, you guys. Okay, there it is. Right now it's just a big black wall, but I'm hoping it's a big black magnetic wall. We'll see, but with the same color on all of it, it does look like it's just a wall and not doors. So that means hopefully when it's white with dry erase paint, it'll just look like a big white wall and not like a bunch of doors. But anyways, it's like 2.10 already. Um, I kind of just had some country music plan and got in the zone and was just painting and painting. And then now I've looked at my phone and I only have like 30 minutes until I need to start cleaning up to head out for the day, but that's fine. Um, I only have like a couple things to do. I did bring the big letters I printed with my Cricut that say like math wall to put up top, but I'm gonna wait until that's done painting. So I have the letters that for the um, word wall to go up here. I'm gonna try and get those spaced and up nice and neat. And then honestly, that's probably it for today. I am so tired. You can probably tell I'm out of breath and I have paint on my knees that I can't get off. I like took a bird bath in um, my classroom sink <laughs> with the hand soap. I don't know if you've ever tried to wash your whole arm with hand soap in a classroom sink, but it's pretty hard. But anyways, um, couldn't really get my knees into the bird bath. So my knees just have a bunch of paint on them. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna get the word wall letters up. And other than that, I'm just gonna head out and let this thing dry. 
Okay, those are the letters I was talking about. Um, they are from TBT, the font is anyways. It's from KG Fonts, and it is KG blank space solid bolded. And then I just um, laminated white cardstock, so they're laminated. And then I expanded them inside of Cricut Design Studio to be seven inches tall on the cutting mat. So they are all seven inches tall, and they're all cut already laminated. So I laminated the cardstock, put them into the Cricut, cut using a screenshot of KG blank space solid and expanded to seven inches. If you have a Cricut, I hope that made sense. If you don't have a Cricut, that would make no sense at all. And if you need help, I can explain to you. But this is what they look like. Um, I know the D is like a little bit off. It's a little lower. So I'll move that up. But what I do is just lay them out on a counter or like on a table spaced how I want them to. And then I just stuck painter's tape over the top of them and lifted up the painter's tape. That way they would stay all in a line once I just stuck them up on the wall. So that is what they look like. I love how the white pops on the brown. And I also have math wall with some like fun little um, symbols to go up there. But for now, I'm going to try and just stick these up with some Velcro dots. And then that is probably it. Ta -da! That is what it looks like. And I lied. I did not use the Velcro dots. I just used the staple gun to staple into the wood because I pulled a bunch of staples out of these cabinets and out of the top of that before I did it. So I know that it's okay to staple or I know at least that I wouldn't be the first one to do it. So I stapled. And <laughs> some of you guys have talked about this clog right here. Um, I actually can take it off the wall. There's like no wall behind it if that makes sense there's like a big cut out hole there and i know that the clock is wrong and it just will always be there and it will always be wrong um but that's okay you know something funny quirky little thing about this classroom this clock over here does work and someone said that like, you could make that into a quote and i'm going to i'm going to put the words you are above it and then loved in all caps and the o will be the clock but anyways, that is the word wall. I'm loving how that turned out. I'm excited to have math wall up here and then it'll be kind of cohesive. Let me hop on down from my perch and then we'll chat. Back on the ground now. That is all for today for day 12. <laughs> Just priming all six of the doors took quite a while and I wanted to be sure that the primer was super even. That way when I put the white on top of it, the white is even because if you have like an uneven primer, I'm sure it would be really hard to make the white on top look cohesive. So I took my time and made sure that it looks good. Got the word wall labeled and then you guys, you're gonna laugh at this. Before I go, let me tell you, um, this guy just came in to check the lights in my room to make sure that they're all working so that if they're not, he can service them tomorrow. And I guess there are a couple that are out so he's gonna fix them tomorrow. But while I'm like staring up, trying to help him like look at the lights, I realize, I don't know if you can see one. Okay, do you see it? There's like a bunch of those little like glow in the dark <laughs> stars and there's like Saturn and a comet that's on fire. And there's the moon, a bunch of little like glow in the dark, um, little like stickers on my ceiling. <laughs> so I guess um, if I have time, I'll take those down before school starts. But right now, not worried about it. Um, it's about 2.40 and I am going to head home so I can shower and get some of this paint off of me. I wonder if I went through a metal detector if I would set it off with my <laughs> painted body. But anyways, that is all. Ta-da! It's black. I hate it, but it will be white tomorrow. <laughs> See you then. Good morning, I am back and the doors are still ugly and black, <laughs> but that is okay. We are going to make things happen today. So this will be day 13 of setup and this is actually going to be my final day of consecutive setup. I'm really happy with how everything has gone. I feel like I have a clean, organized, um, fairly blank slate, but my plans for today are to get these doors done. I actually have to leave to go pick up my district laptop at noon. Um, so I'll probably leave here around 11.30, go do that. I should be back by one with a couple hours, but I'm hoping that the dry erase paint is already up by the time I leave. Um, right now it's like 8.15. So if I can get this done by 11.30, then I will be able to come back after I've gotten my laptop. I have my personal laptop as well. Um, with all the fonts that I use. And that way I'm going to be able to measure the bulletin board spaces and kind of brain dump all the things that I know I want, but just organize them into each board and figure out how I'm going to separate the big board across the front. It's not going to look like that, I promise. Um, so anyways, the projects for today will be dry erase paint and digitally designing the bulletin boards. Um, other than that, I did have to stop at Walmart to pick up a paintbrush because let me show you guys. 
two of the doors, the two like on the outside have handles on them. And I wasn't able to get like underneath the handle. Do you see right there? With um, my roller, obviously it didn't fit and I didn't have a brush. So I picked up a brush that way with a dry erase paint, I can just like kind of push the paint under the handle. So I'm gonna go get that out of the car and then get started. That way we have three hours to make the doors happen before it is laptop time. Got everything and I wanted to show you guys at Walmart, I picked up the little um, magnetic buttons. These are the magnets I was originally looking for for border on the back chalkboard that's magnetic. So now I'll be able to use these for whatever I put on that chalkboard. But I want to test it and I'm a little bit nervous because I do feel like the coating of the magnetic primer might not be thick enough to really sustain a lot of weight, but let's just see. I want to be honest with you guys. If it doesn't work, I'll let you know that it was a flop so no one else wastes their money, but let's see. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, okay. That's staying. I don't know if it would hold up a piece of paper because it doesn't like pull the magnet out of my hand, but it definitely went on there. Also, the attraction will probably be a little bit less after I've put paint on top of it, the dry erase paint. Um, but you know, we tried. We tried and even if it's not magnetized, it'll be dry erase. I'm glad I tried it. But anyways, let's open the dry erase paint and see if it's all good to go. Okay guys, I have my supplies. I put a new little thing um, on the roller and I have a fresh paint tray so it won't get chalkboard paint or anything on it. Um, I have some gloves that I wear when I'm painting in case you haven't noticed so I don't get paint on my nails. Um, but anyways, this is a little bit different. So what you do, um, you have to mix two different things. There's like a part A and a part B and it activates the paint so that it can cure and have the dry erase effect. So let's read the directions. It says, okay, Oh, wait, you need a paint stirrer. I have this sacrificial ruler that I found. We'll use this. Well, now I'm a little nervous because someone mentioned expiring and I see 2017 on the can, but it doesn't say Best Buy. It just says dry erase base 417. Huh? I guess we're just going to try it. Okay. Back to the directions. Causes nose and throat irritation may cause allergic skin reaction. Well, that is not what I signed up for, folks. It keeps saying to like remove the residue from the roller, but I don't think there is any residue. What if I just like roll it on me to get it off? Is that the opposite of what you're supposed to do? Wow. This is interesting. Look at her now. That was bizarre. I wonder why it looked like that. Paint is weird. Ooh, it smells. Y'all, I should be wearing like protective gear, I'm sure. Please do not like follow this as a tutorial because I have no clue what I'm doing if you haven't figured that out. This is the one that is bad for you. Okay. Ew, why is it that color? I'm gonna sacrifice another ruler so I don't have to clean this one. Be right back. Okay, and the gloves have gone on because apparently this one causes nose, throat, and skin irritation. So that's cute. Let me just read it. Stir each can before mixing. Pour part A into part B. Stir thoroughly. Dense foam roller. We are doing it. We're going for it. No more. Oh, I gotta stir it. I'm done. Okay, here we go. Guys, this is so interesting. 
never in my teacher training program that they teach us about this. Probably because normal people don't do this, Lauren. Okay, I briefly stirred it. Here we go. Are you ready to activate? Let's activate. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, she's in there. I feel like it's like a science experiment volcano and it's gonna like blow up. But it hasn't yet, so that's a good sign. Okay. I feel like this is thoroughly stirred. And I only have an hour to apply it. How do I get this off of there? I wanna use all the paint I can. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay. Let's try it, you guys. Moment of truth, will this cover? Remember when I thought two cans would be enough for the whole wall? That's a joke because this is all of one can and it covered like a door and a half almost, um, almost two actually. So I think what I'm gonna do is open the other can and commit to using two cans for three doors and then I'll go get two more cans at Home Depot. It's not too far to do the other three because I would just, it has to look good now. I mean, I've already painted them black and it's not covering like I had hoped. I'm a little bit <laughs> flustered as you can see, but it's okay. Um, I have a lot of time and I will be able to get in my classroom on like the 16th, I think all day. So if I have to fix doors, then I can't fix doors. And now I'm thinking my ultimate fallback plan is to just put dry erase contact paper over the whole thing and pretend painting never happened, even though it's costing me an arm and a leg. But anyways, my advice, Maybe don't try this project, <laughs> but we'll see. Once I see it through the fruition, we'll see how it turns out. But anyways, I'm going to mix up the other um, set now, the can A, can B, make the other can do this door and like go back over these two to finish them out. And then i um, probably going to leave and try to go to Home Depot before I pick up my laptop. Um, that way, when I get back from the laptop, I can do the final three doors because it's not taking too long. It's just the breaking it up by having to go get more um, is gonna take a while. And I'm just sad, but I can, don't wanna waste any time. I need to get this done today, so I'm gonna keep on painting and it'll be okay. We're gonna roll with the punches and that's okay. Alrighty, painting time. <laughs> Alrighty y'all, three doors done. They are looking better now that I have decided to just use more paint for less doors. I think that is the best decision I could have made. It'll be more costly for me, but if I'm gonna do this, I wanna do it right and make sure that it looks good. So those are going to dry. It's only about 9.45, so I'm actually going to run to Home Depot and grab two more cans of paint for the other three. And then I should be able to get back by like 10.30 if I'm like quick in and out and I can get at least like start on the doors. My concern is that if I start them, I have to finish them because you have to use the paint within an hour because of the chemicals. So I should probably stop talking and get on the road and we're just gonna crank this out. But next time, um, I think I'm Joanna Gaines and I'm gonna do a project like this. Will you guys please just remind me that this is not okay for me. This is too much for me <laughs> because I am not Joanna and holy stinking cow. But I'm gonna get on the road and stop wasting time. Let's go get more paint and let's get back and get to it. That might have been record time and I promise I did not speed, but I have two more <laughs> dry erase kits and I think it is time to knock out these other doors. That way I can leave at 1130 and hopefully the doors will be done. And then if anything, if like push comes to a shove and I need one more can to top coat it, I could get it on my way back from getting my laptop and do it 
when I'm back. But anyways, it's around 10, 15 now, so it was super fast. And I discovered, you guys, when I ran to Home Depot, that there are so many things, like, around here. There's a Chipotle, there's a Target, there's, like, all kinds of stuff. And, like, Six Flags, <laughs> which is crazy and so fun. Like, I could leave school on a Friday and go to Six Flags, like, maybe. But anyways, I have the paint. And I'm gonna get right to it so I can knock this out. My arm hurts so bad, but I'm just gonna keep going and then it will be done. <laughs> Ta-da! Six white doors. And that took like exactly an hour to mix and use both cans. Oh my gosh, do I have paint? <laughs> That's embarrassing. Well, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> all six of them are painted and it's about 11.15. I have to leave here around 11.30. I can't with the paint. <laughs> One second. Alrighty, better. I need to leave here in about 15 minutes to go pick up my laptop from the district office downtown. So I think I'm honestly just gonna rest for a minute. I know it's my last day of my setup marathon and I should be go, go, go. But y'all, that was tiring. I cannot believe that I got all those doors painted in like, what was it, like three hours plus a trip to and back from Home Depot. Crazy. So I need to calm down a moment and um, collect myself before I go to the district office to do anything. Um, I got most of the paint off of me and I'm just going to the ID department. So I think it will be okay. And then I should be back in my classroom by one. I might stop and pick up some lunch or something on the way back. But then I will have two hours in my classroom to wrap it up. And I think I'm just going to plan when I get back for the bulletin boards. That way in um, the time where I'm at home and I can't come in, I can at least be preparing and sorting all of the bulletin board items like the, um, letters and everything into different gallon size Ziploc bags. That way when I do get in for a day on the 16th, I can just crank them all out. So anyways, I'm gonna rest for a minute and then I will go pick up my laptop and I'll check back in with you guys. I have made it back and I'm just loving coming into those white doors. But anyways, two things. I have my laptop, so that's great. I can, I guess, start adding things to the Google Drive that's on this device. And then I also have Chick-fil-A. So that's even better. And I am going to spend the rest of the afternoon, I have about an hour and a half, I'm going to map out all of the bulletin boards. Um, let me quickly tell you guys what I'm thinking. This board, it would make sense for me to do a centers board there, but I'm thinking I want to do a digital centers display that has a timer that changes um, as we rotate through centers. So I'm a little confused about what to do with this board. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know. Um, the two little boards in the windows, I think one of them will be my birthday board. Um, and I know it's not super visible, but I don't know that I really want to use like a full bulletin board space for birthdays. I just feel like it's not a super academic display. But again, maybe it could go there. I'm thinking this might be a cute place to display like seasonal crafts or something. But anyways, one of the small ones will be a birthday board. And I think the other one, I'm going to do something like we are celebrating since you can see it from the hallway, I'll say we are celebrating and then like have my student of the week displayed there as kind of like a bragging rights thing. You're in the window when you're student of the week. I feel like that'd be fun to celebrate those kiddos. And then in the back, um, I think this one might be something like um, internet logins. So if they're having trouble getting in, like their student logins, or it might just be like um, something to do with like responsible use something like that I'm not quite sure yet it's a little bit tricky because whatever goes on this one I probably won't want it to be like interchanging frequently throughout the year because it's obviously hard to get to that one so that one I'm a little unsure of too um, but this one I'm gonna do like look what we're reading or look what we've read and then um, as we read read alouds I'll find the cover online and print them out and then we'll just add them in like a big collage to that board so that one will just grow and grow and grow throughout the year, but I think that'd be fun and cute display to celebrate the books we've read together as a class. And then again, in this space, I'm going to attach um, the WOW work wall. I'll probably do that on the 16th when I have a full day in my room and I can laminate. <laughs> Thank you guys for cheering me out with the laminator, but I need to laminate the background papers before I start to put the board together right here. So anyways, that's what I'm thinking for the boards. And then um, the math wall, you guys will have to wait and see. I already made my header like math wall to put up here with the same letters as the word wall. Um, I couldn't fit rainbow math wall of my dreams. So <laughs> we're just going to have math wall, but I already have purchased like the calendar I want to use and the math, like vocabulary terms I want to display and everything. So anyways, that's what I'm thinking for now. I'm going to sit down. Oh, and the chalkboard. 
on the chalkboard, I'm thinking about putting my schedule um, vertically, my tattoo subject, I don't even want to say this, but flip chart, if I have one, we'll go there. And then um, any like group behavior management strategies, like earning marbles in a jar kind of deal, will go there. The big pocket chart will stay there. The foundations cards will stay there. This calendar will go to the math wall. But anyways, that's what I'm thinking for wall space right now, but I'm just gonna sit down and take the time to get that all out of my brain so I don't forget. And again, comment below if you have any ideas for that extra board up front. I don't wanna do a center board, um, even though that like is the logical thing I think to put on that board, that's not what I wanna do. So if you have any ideas, let me know. It's not big enough to do wow work. That's the problem I'm running into is that none of the bullets and boards are big enough to display all of the students' work at once. Um, so anyways, that is the issue. But for now, I'm going to eat my lunch and start planning. You guys, I opened the back door like to air out the paint smell and maybe help it dry a bit faster. And a big, ah, I think it just landed on me. A big horse fly flew in the door and I can't get it. And I'm scared that it's gonna fly and stick in the paint because the paint is still drying. That is what I get for trying to be productive and open the door to dry it. Dang it. Really quickly, I just wanted to show you guys what I've been working on. Um, right now, I'm kind of breaking down the doors and deciding what to put on each door. Um, I have purchased a few things for math that I wanted to share with you all. Um, one of them is the first calendar, first grade calendar curriculum. I really like all of the pieces of the calendar and how that routine each day could really help to solidify some number sense for my students. So I purchased that. It comes with a lot of different pieces. Obviously, you don't have to use all of the steps of the calendar, but there are like lesson plans already pre-made for the calendar itself and like how to use it in the classroom, if that makes sense. I'll link that in the video description. And then I also purchased um, from Jillian Starr, I think, um, the math word wall like components for first grade math. So the word wall for math will probably take up those two doors, but let me just show you guys what I've put together. I'm in just PowerPoint on my computer and I just use like the shapes um, to make six rectangles that are all the same size to represent the six doors. Um, these are the things that I'm thinking about putting on each door. They're obviously not to scale because Clearly, I want some of the space to be used as dry erase now that I've gone into all of that effort to paint it and everything and all of the money to paint it. At the very least, they're all white, so at least they're white and have a nice background. But anyways, um, these are the things that I'm thinking of putting on each of the doors. I'm hoping that here I can hang two magnetic curtain rods um, to display anchor charts, like because that door is pretty tall, I'll be able to fit two pieces of chart paper, like one, two. Um, those would be things that we have done together and then if we are going to make an anchor chart in math we would probably do it in this space on the carpet that's over there this will be where we meet for a math whole group every day so um, anchor charts there the next door I have the hundred chart from last year that I showed you guys from the target dollar spot that I already stuck all the numbers on um, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna take all the numbers off of it and we'll use that to count up to the hundredth day of school and I'll have like a little title that says like 100 days of learning or 100 days smarter or something like that and then above it I did find the 120s chart from this year and I like that better because it has more numbers so it is more applicable to the first grade standards now so the 120s chart will just always be displayed over on those doors to serve as a giant reference for students and then on the third door right here I'm going to put the calendar up top and then some of the calendar components that come with the um, first e calendar curriculum. I'll put them underneath so that students can come up and like write on the tally chart each day. They can help me fill in the 10 frame for like 10 less, 10 more, one less, one more. Down here, I'm thinking we might have like a problem of the day and I will use the dry erase space to have some people try and solve it in different ways. Um, here I'm going to put on um, the this door, the days of the week, and then they'll have like a little clip that says today is, tomorrow will be, yesterday was. So we're just familiarizing ourselves with the days of the week. Underneath that, um, I'm thinking of using this space at the bottom of this door. If we don't have like an extra long space for problem of the day solving, I would like to do a cute little display that says, what does a mathematician look like? And then have uh, just a mirror. So the students will read like, what does the mathematician look like? And then it's them because they all are mathematicians. And then I dedicated two doors for now to the math word wall. I'm thinking maybe it'll just be the top half of a door and then 
the top half of two doors, excuse me, and then underneath that we could have more functional dry erase space. But this is what I'm thinking for now, and I'm gonna keep going and make the boards um, for the two in the front, and then I'm also going to map out the chalkboard so that I can buy some washi tape to divide it up to cater to all of the uses I would like it to serve. All right, y'all, time is up. It is about three o'clock. I was able to finish measuring the boards and got them all into the PowerPoint laid out. Um, and then I just kind of wrote down what I expected each board to be for. That way I can play with the fonts, print the letters on my Cricut and everything at home over the next two weeks or so. But that is it for my marathon of setup. Um, I won't be back in my classroom really for a full day, like I said, until the 16th. Um, my PD starts, I have to be there at 8. It starts at 8.30. It's about five minutes away from the school. The school opens at 7. So that means that I can pop in here in the mornings if I wanted to come in to grab something or do something quickly and have about 45 minutes in my room each morning before I went, I could do that. So I think I'm going to switch over to weekly vlogs now, but I definitely will still keep you guys updated because I have loved bringing you along and this room is not all the way finished yet as you can tell so we're going to crank out some bulletin boards over this two week time of PD um, but other than that let me show you what I'm leaving. Alrighty it's pretty much the same. <laughs> I think I like this layout for the front board. Um, obviously I'll move the foundations letter cards somewhere over here so that we can access them for um, making words every day with foundations. The tables are the same. I've gone ahead and laid out some of my materials for the math wall. Um, that way this can flatten out because it was rolled up, but that way I can just kind of get a feel for what I have, how much space it will take up. The library bins, um, the labels I'll make over the break and I will actually be making labels for the books as well. Just little Avery stickers that match. Here is the word wall and here is the biggest project yet, the white math wall of my dreams. So that is what we are leaving. Again, thank you guys so much for all of your support over this setup experience. I am excited to be going on a little camping vacation this weekend and then to be getting started with some of the um, professional development and learning a bit more about the systems in this district, the curriculum we'll be using, expectations, and kind of planning for the actual um, instructional year. I think I'll feel a lot better once that is done as well. But anyways, I'm gonna head out you guys. Make sure that you subscribe and stick around for those weekly vlogs, they will be coming. But for now, that's all, I love you guys. Bye.